Hey, it's Jay from Taurus InfoSec here. Um, so today we'll be going over the installation of a home lab for someone who's trying to get into cybersecurity, whether they're trying to do a, a capture the flag event, whether they're trying to do try hack me, hack the box, uh, you name it. If you're trying to get hands-on experience and have a, a Kali virtual machine, then this is your guide. Um, We'll thoroughly go through the process and actually get you the settings that will be efficient for you uh, during one of those competitions or, or challenges. Um, so really the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna get the, the required uh, documents. So first we're gonna go into virtualbox.org and we're gonna, we put that on the description. It's www.virtualbox.org. You're going to download and depending on your host operating system, I'm using Windows. If you're using Mac, then you would hit Mac and Linux um, if you're running Linux. So for on my case, I have Windows as my host operating system. So I'm just going to click on here and that will just install an EXE for us to, to actually download that. Um, the second thing we're going to download, um, and we just want to start this off um, prior to us configuring a virtual box because it will take a while, is our Kali BM. So pretty much what we're doing is we have our type two hypervisor, which is a virtual machine. Um, I mean the virtual box. And what we're going to do is we're going to download a pre-built Kali machine. And we're going to put that on top of a hypervisor. That way, if we have some sort of uh, issues with that virtual machine, we can just delete it and replace it immediately or we could create snapshots and then just recover um, into that snapshot um, really the flexibility that virtual machines give us that's that's why we're we chose uh, virtualbox as it rather than just installing it on the disk itself so i'm going to click download um, it's going to ask you whether you want the image the iso file or the virtual machine uh, we're going to hit virtual machine because we want that pre-built machine that will be way easier to install. Um, so we're just going to click virtual box and that will start the download. Now it is about three gigabytes. So I'd make sure you have space for that. Um, I did go ahead and cancel that because I had already downloaded it prior to this video. But what we're going to do is we're going to go into file explorer, go ahead into our downloaded, um, downloaded files and we're just going to double click on the virtual box um, icon. So I'll click on that. It's going to ask you, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You'll hit yes. And, and it'll guide you through the installation. It's just like any other installation for any program you've installed. Um, you'll just click next and choose the default path for it. Um, I do already have it, so I'll be able to show you that part, but it should be pretty intuitive. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through this. There you go. Okay, so once you have gone through the installation for your VirtualBox software, you're going to go into your search bar, type in VirtualBox, and you'll see the Oracle VM app. So you're just going to click on that. It will pop up and this is your manager. Um, right now you can see I have a virtual machine loaded. It's named Kali and it's powered off. Um, you won't have that because you still haven't added a virtual machine, but we're going to do that right now. So we're just going to minimize this real quick. And that Kali Linux pre-built machine you just downloaded most likely came compressed um, either in a zip file or a WinRAR file. Um, I have it on a WinRAR, so I'm just going to right click on it and then hit extract files, um, or you can do extract here. So if you do extract files, then click um, whatever location, I'm just going to hit downloads and then hit OK. That's going to start doing a, an extraction and it should take only a, a few minutes to complete. Um, I had already done that, so right here you'll see that's the, the raw folder. So you just click on the folder. You'll see the .vbox file, which is our pre-built virtual machine, and you're going to double click on that. 
So once you click on that, you're going to see that automatically populated towards the VirtualBox manager. Um, really what you need to do here is we're going to go into settings and this is something um, I'm showing you how to do because it's really useful for, for your labs to set up a shared folder between your host operating system and your guest operating system. So that way, if you have a challenge where you need to interact with a document in your VM, then you can just download it on the Windows uh, machine, which is your host, and you can just drop it on that folder and then interact with it in the virtual machine. Um, that's something I try and do all the time because it saves me a lot of time um, not having to log in to that website or I'm doing the challenge. So we're just gonna click shared folders, uh, click on the folder with the plus icon that's green, and it's gonna say folder path. So here you're gonna click the drop down menu of the arrow and click other. You're gonna navigate um, to, to where you set up a shared folder. Now, um, in this case, I'm just going to the desktop and I had already created a, a folder called example folder two. So I'm just going to click that, um, and then select the folder. Um, really whatever you want to call your folder, you just name it. Um, generally you want to call it shared something. Um, but yeah, you just create that map it to, to virtual box. And then you're just going to click on this auto mount auto mount um, box. So hit OK, hit OK again. And that's going to add that shared folder. Um, you'll see it says shared folder one. So now we have that shared folder and start our virtual machine. So we just click normal start. And really the coolest thing about these pre-built VMs is that um, with the ISO, you would have to select how much RAM, how much video memory, how much CPU usage you want to give it. So instead of having to build the whole machine from the ground up and then having to go through the whole installation process of Kali, this already comes pre-configured. Um, it kind of saves a lot, a lot of time. Now, something you'll realize is that when you run the virtual machine, the window is going to be really small. So something I recommend to everyone is you click on this view tab and make sure that this auto resize guest display is selected. Um, the way you know this is selected is by seeing the little arrow that's on the, on the bottom left corner. Right now it's selected, so if I hit it again, you'll see it, it's not selected, and I'll just reselect it again. Um, let me just close this out. Um, our default credentials for Kali are going to be Kali for the username and Kali for the password. We hit enter on that and should be in to our virtual machine. Um, we'll expand it and you'll see that automatically resize to the, to the host operating system display. Um, so really the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to go into the terminal um, by clicking the little black box on the top left corner and I expand it and I'm just going to make it a little bigger so everyone can see this. There you go. So if I, right now I'm on my home directory because I see the little tilde there, but what we're going to do is you're just going to change directory into root. So slash, and I'm going to list my directories. That's my root. So we're going to do change directory into media. I'm going to list the files again. And then you'll see that there is a, a shared folder that we had already previously mapped. So if we go into it and then hit tab and then enter. Um, now we're on that shared folder. If we do in a list, um, it won't show anything. But if I do a touch um, file.txt and I do another list, that created a txt within that shared folder. Um, and we can actually test it out by going back to the Windows um, client, go to desktop, my shared folder, and there it is, my file.txt. So now I can move 
files between my two machines um, without any issues. Um, one common issue that I see a lot is that whenever you try and change the directory into your shared folder, you might say like permission denied. Um, we can actually see this by doing a ls tech la and it will show you that the owner for the shared folder is, is under this bbox sf group. So the way you would resolve that issue is by adding your, your user account into that permission group. So what we would do is uh, sudo add user. Um, in this case, the user is called Kali. And then the permission group, which would be bvox sf. Now we should already be added to it. So whenever I put in the password here, it should say I'm already a member of bvox sf. But if in your case you're not added, then this will be your solution to actually be able and interact with your shared folder. Um, that's pretty much for this installation. Um, really, the purpose of Kali. Uh, and Kali is very powerful. It, it comes pre-installed with, with most of the, the popular um, offensive security tools. So if you're doing a competition, um, Kali should already come with all the tools that you'll need. Um, obviously, as you progress in your career and in your learning journey, um, you'll start to pick up different tools that you'll want to use and adopt into your toolkit. But, but Kali really gives you that, that foundational tool set to, uh, so you can start growing your skills and just becoming a better hacker. So happy hacking, everyone. Make sure to subscribe, like the video. Um, please let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions, if you'd like to see a video on a certain topic, and I'll make sure to cover it. Um, hope you have a good day and peace.